Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Pam and today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little car pothos. Is that how you say it? I am not a plant person so I'm not really 100% sure how you pronounce all these plants. If you're interested in the written pattern, you can find this pattern in my Etsy shop for goodness keepsakes. Without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start by showing you how to make the little leaves for our little car pothos. This here in particular is, I think it's called King's Canyon Heartland yarn. If you like this yarn, you can use this one, but you can pretty much use whatever green you like. A dark green would be really nice. And for this whole project, I'm using an H hook. I find a Susan Bates really handy because it's an inline hook, which when we get to the basket, you'll see why that's very handy. <laughs> so we're going to start with a basic slip knot and chain two. In the second chain from the hook, which is the first chain you made, we're going to put in six single crochets. I like to work over my tail whenever possible. Makes it so I don't have to fish it in later. And then we're going to join to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. Ta-da! Now chain two. Whoops. The only thing I don't like about this yarn is how stringy it is. So see that space where we worked our slip stitch into? That's where we're going to work three double crochets. So if you pull it to the side, you can kind of see it a little better. That space there. Into that same stitch, we're going to th put three double crochets. Into the next stitch, a half double crochet. Into the next stitch, three double crochets. Then chain two, we're going to do a chain two picket. So chain two, don't pull your chains too tight here. Um, we're going to go in between the V of the double crochet below it and kind of out the side here like that. And slip stitch. That's our chain two picket. Now into the next stitch, we're going to put three double crochets. Into the next stitch, a half double crochet. Into the next stitch, three double crochets. Then we're going to chain two. And we're going to slip stitch into the same stitch that we worked the three double crochets and the next stitch. So slip stitch here. And slip stitch in the next spot. Now, in between your leaves, you're always going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, at working any subsequent leaves, you're going to be working again into the second chain from the hook. So this one here. We're going to start with three single crochets on the first side of the stem. So one, two, Three. Now we're going to bring our yarn around the front, so don't let your yarn go behind the stem, but let your yarn go in front of the stem. Turn your work 180 degrees. And working into that same stitch, we're going to put the last three single crochets, so that we have a total of six single crochets going into this stitch. Just like that. Slip stitch to the first single crochet to join. Now we're going to repeat our leaf pattern. So chain two, three double crochets into that same stitch you slip stitched into. Half double 
half double crochet in the next stitch, three double crochets in the next stitch, a chain two picket, so chain two, go right through here in your double crochet below with a slip stitch, three double crochets into the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch, three double crochets in the next stitch, Sorry if I sound nasally, by the way. I have a cold. <laughs> Chain two. We're going to slip stitch here and then here. So slip stitch here. And then here. And again, in between your leaves, chain eight. Now let me show you one more time. In the second chain from the hook, Put three single crochets, bring your yarn around the front, rotate your work 180 degrees, put three more single crochets on the other side. That's a total of six single crochets in that same stitch. Slip stitch to the first single crochet to join, chain two, Three double crochets in the same stitch you slip stitched into. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Three double crochets in the next stitch. Chain two. Pick it. Whoops. Pick it. Three double crochets in the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Three double crochets in this stitch. Chain two. Slip stitch to the same stitch, and then to the next stitch. Now when you're done with your leaf, you're going to chain six, and cut. You want to make sure to leave yourself about a six to eight inch tail. Just pull it out. And then, unless you worked over this really well, you can fish that in and then cut that off. So you're going to want to make six sets of leaves all together. One with, uh, two with three leaves, two with two leaves, and two with four leaves. For a total of six sets of stems with leaves. And then move your stems to the side and we'll get started on the dirt. For the dirt, I'm just using a dark brown. This is, uh, I believe the color name is Coffee. It's Red Heart Yarn. Now, for this dirt, we're going to start with a magic ring. If you don't know how to do a magic ring, the way I do it, if you have an easier way to do it, do it however. But the way I do it is I make an X pattern wrapping the yarn away and then towards my left hand so that the yarn angled this way is on top. I go under this bottom one, grab this top yarn, bring it up to drop a loop, and then yarn over with that top yarn again and pull it through. And there... Is a magic ring so chain two and into your magic ring put eight double crochets do not cinch your magic ring though not yet anyways Now, we're going to pull this down, but only to about 
this size. We want to be able to get like just our fingertip through it. This is where we're going to be fishing in our stem. So we want to leave an, a gap enough that we can work into it. So I'm going to kind of fold the front together so I can reach it. And into the top, I know it's dark yarn and hard to see, but into the top of your chain, you're going to join. So you should have nine stitches all around and it's going to be kind of cupped and that's okay. Chain two and into the next stitch, put two double crochets and put two double crochets in each stitch around till you get back to the beginning. Now when you get back to this first stitch, this chain two counts as the first double crochet and it's linked to that stitch. So we only need to put one double crochet in there and then join to the top of our chain two. Now for the next row, we're just going to chain two and put one double crochet in each stitch around and join. And we should have 18 stitches in each row at this point. Just make sure that when you get back to the bit beginning that you don't accidentally put a double crochet in this stitch because the chain two goes to that stitch. If you do that and then join to your chain two, your row will keep increasing by one. So chain two and double crochet around again. One more time, chain two and double crochet around, which by the way, if you normally do chain three for your double crochets, that's perfectly fine too. I just personally use chain two, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, so we're going to join to our chain two and we're gonna pull a big loop 
loose so that we can pause where at this point we're going to be working in our stems grab your stems make sure all of the tails are lined up I like to use a large crochet hook for this this is a size P hook and we're going to insert these stems tails into this hole here so I'm going to insert my hook from the inside to the outside because obviously I want my stems to be on the outside of the work and I'm just going to yarn over with all them tails and draw them in now at this point I like to kind of invert my work to make it easier to see and make sure you have all of your tails so make sure you pull it so that you can just start to see the chains that you worked because you don't want strings on the outside grab your beginning tail for your magic ring and cinch it shut around the stems um, I would say work gently you want to be firm but don't pull so tight you pop your tail and break it I've done that before it's very sad <laughs> then when you've done that add your brown tail to your other stem tails and tie a knot i do it by wrapping around my two fingers putting all of the ends in between my fingers and pulling it through holding the knot down against the work and i pull the tail as i kind of push down on the knot so it's right up against the dirt now we can flip this back out the right way and just fish our tails in because there's really no sense in trimming them they can just be stuffing and you'll see you've got all your tails inside and we're ready to continue so for the next row chain one and into the next stitch double crochet this is going to count as your first double crochet two together because you will be joining when you come back around to the top of this double crochet and we're just going to double crochet two together until we get back to the beginning and double crocheting two together is quite easy if you don't know how to do it because you just work the first half of a double crochet in the first stitch the first half of a double crochet in the second stitch and then yarn over and pull through everything these tails like to jump out at you though sometimes so watch your tails <laughs> if they do get cumbersome like you can trim them i just don't bother one thing too is that sometimes see, there's that tail um sometimes i accidentally grab a stitch i already worked like when i'm working double crochet two together sometimes i accidentally go where i've already worked be careful you don't do that So when you've got worked in all the stitches and you come back around you're going to join to the top of the double crochet right here with a slip stitch and then cut your brown yarn leaving yourself like a five or six inch tail this is probably more like four inches and honestly that's enough and we're going to stuff this with polyfill before we cinch it shut now this looks like a lot of polyfill, but when you compress it, it compresses down quite a bit. You really do not want to overstuff this. This might even be a little bit too much. But stuff it with some polyfill. You just want it to hold its shape. But if you overstuff this, especially since these are double crochets, it can bulge and you'll see all the white coming through. You don't need all that excess. You just need it to hold a basic shape. Some people said you could stuff this with potpourri. I mean that sounds fun if you want to do that if you do that what I might do is leave this tail significantly longer um, thread it through and only temporarily since cinch it shut so that you can change it out but I'm making this just permanently fluffy so for finishing off I'm going to insert my hook into each stitch the same direction you can do it from the inside to the outside or from the outside to the inside it doesn't matter but go in each stitch and draw through your yarn through in the same direction and just keep doing that until you've done all the stitches get in there Once you've got them all, 
cinch it shut. Look at that. Get in there. And then just kind of tie a knot. I usually just reach underneath one of the stitches and tie a knot that way. And then you don't have to, but it looks prettier if you do. Fish your tail in to your work. Get back in there. No one asked you to come out. And there's your plant. So let's get started on the hanging basket. In my pattern, I use the Aran yarn, the Aran color yarn by Red Heart. It's, um... It's like this pretty creamy color. I quite like it. I think tan looks really good with it too. But use whatever color you want. We're going to start with a basic slip knot and chain three. Into the third chain from the hook, we're going to put nine double crochets. Then you're going to join to the top of your chain three. You should have 10 stitches around. Chain two or three, whichever you prefer, honestly. And put two double crochets in each stitch around until you get back to the first stitch. When you get back to the first stitch, we're going to work a double crochet in that stitch there and join to the top of our chain two. Now chain one, this next row can be really tricky. The next row, we're actually not going to turn our work like I've done in the previous patterns. If you want to, you can, and then just make sure when you get to the next row, you turn your work again. And if you find this all together too tricky, um, you can just opt to work single crochets in the back loops only, and you'll still end up with a really pretty hanger. But what I'm going to do is work into this bottom loop here. So if you look all around, there's these bottom loops. And what makes it kind of helpful is if you let the edge kind of curl and you can see them pop up. So it's not the top two loops, it's this bottom loop hiding in the back. So I'm going to work under, there's my top two loops, under this bottom loop here. And I'm going to go around and single crochet into these bottom loops 20 times. It really does help to kind of curl the top down because that bottom loop almost stands up when you do that. After you've done 20 of these, 
kind of straighten everything back out and join to the top of your first single crochet which is kind of leaning forward it's not this this is your chain one this is your first single crochet and so you've got this really cool rim on the bottom when you do that but again if you find this way too tricky to do just work in the back loops and single crochet around it'll still look really good for the next row we're simply going to chain for the next row, we're simply going to chain two and double crochet in each stitch around. After you've double crocheted 19 times, you should be back to the beginning. This stitch goes to the chain two, so we're going to slip stitch to the chain two to join. I say some really funny things sometimes. So for the next row, we're going to chain one, and we're simply going to work single crochets going around, but we're going to work in between the posts under everything, under the top and bottom loops. Just reach right in between the posts and single crochet. And do that 20 times. Once you've worked in all the posts, you'll be back to where you started, join to the top of your single crochet. Now is where things get kind of tricky and can be very difficult if you are new to crochet. If this row is too difficult for you, simply repeat this process where you do a row of double crochet and then single crochet in between the posts and then continue on after row six. This first one is also the hardest one to do. Um, you'll notice that on the pattern I say chain three. The reason is because while I normally do a chain two for double crochets, I want the extra added height to make getting to the top chain uh, easier when I get back, and I'll show you why when I get there. <laughs> so we're going to do something called a horizontal puff stitch. For the horizontal puff stitch, this is not exactly like, I've seen people do this different ways. And this is my own way of doing it in a way that I think makes it lay nice and keep things sort of tight together. So we're going to start by yarning over and we're just going to wrap our hook around the chain three. Notice I've got my finger there because otherwise it's going to just flip forward and stuff and it, that drives me nuts. So I yarn over and I wrap my hook around the chain three and I'm kind of holding everything in place for me. I'm going to draw up a loop and then I'm going to repeat yarn over, wrap around the chain three, draw up a loop. I'm leaving them kind of loose because I want that. Yarn over, wrap around the, the chain three one more time and draw up a loop. I'm keeping my finger in place there. It helps keep the stitches from sliding off the chain three post. Now, we're going to skip a stitch. So this stitch here is where the chain three post goes into. That's the stitch we're going to skip. This is the stitch we're going into next. We're going to draw up a loop there, but I don't want to draw this really loose. I want to keep it kind of tight. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through everything but the last loop. So that's kind of tricky. Whoop, just like that. So that you've got two loops left on your hook. This is when having an inline hook is very beneficial because it glides right on through. <laughs> Yarn over, 
pull through the last two loops on the hook. It's almost like doing a single crochet. Now we're going to double crochet into that same stitch that we did our sort of where we sort of like drew up a loop. We're going to double crochet into that stitch and we're going to repeat the puff stitch pattern. Now, just a little side note, you only have to work around the double crochet and that will still look really good. But if you look, there is that sort of uh, vertical bar there that's holding all those puffs in place. If you work through that too, you'll end up with um, a much tighter result and you won't see that horizontal bar peeking through when the fabric is stretched. And that looks nice, but you don't have to do that. So yarn over and you can either go just around the post or you can go through that vertical bar too, like that. See how I went through the vertical bar too? That's what I do. I think it looks a little nicer, but you don't have to. You only have to go around this post and that'll be fine. But for this, I'm going to go around the vertical bar too. And I'm going to yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Again, I'm leaving these kind of long, about, you know, half an inch long. Yarn over, go around the post, draw up a loop. So we're doing that three times total. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw up a loop. And then we're going to skip a stitch and go into the next stitch and draw up a short loop. That's just going to take our horizontal puff and hold it down against the work. Some people don't do that. I find that very helpful. And we're going to go through all the loops except the last one so that we have two loops left on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops, and you've done another one. So then we're going to work a double crochet in the same stitch as that weird short loop we drew up. And we're going to repeat. Yarn over, go around the post and drop a loop. Yarn over, go around the post and draw up a loop. Yarn over, go around the post and draw up a loop. Skip a stitch, draw up a loop in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through everything but the last loop so that you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. And then work a double crochet into that same stitch where we drew up a loop. So we've got three puff stitches so far. We're going to do this a total of 10 times. You're going to yarn over, draw up a loop three times. Skip a stitch, draw up a loop in the next spot. Yarn over, pull through all but the last loop. Yarn over, pull through the last two. And then double crochet in that same stitch. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw up a loop. So you've drawn up, drawn up three loops around the post. Skip a stitch, draw up a loop here. Yarn over, pull through all but the last one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, draw up a loop once, yarn over, draw up a loop twice, yarn over, draw up a loop a third time, skip a stitch and draw up a short loop in that next stitch, pull through everything but the last loop so that you've got two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Double crochet in the same stitch and start over. Make sure you don't yarn over before you go into that stitch where you draw up your short loop. And if it helps, you can yarn over and pull through everything and then just sort of backtrack one. Sometimes that might make it a little bit easier for you. And then if you notice, what I do is I grab my fingers and I pull down on all those loops. So when I yarn over and I pull through those two loops, it's easier because they're out of the way. Double crochet in the same stitch I drew up a short loop. 
Yarn over, draw up a loop around the post, yarn over, draw up a loop around the post, yarn over, draw up a loop around the post, skip a stitch and draw up a short loop, yarn over, pull through all but that last loop, yarn over, pulling all those loops down so I can go through easily, pull through the last two loops. Double crochet in that same stitch where I drew up a short loop. And repeat. This is the last one, by the way. Um, you'll see it looks like there's three stitches left, but this stitch here, remember, goes to the chain three we did. So we're going to skip this stitch and draw up a short loop in this stitch here. Yarn over, pull through everything but the last one. Yarn over, pull through two. And then you need to join to the top of your chain three. It is not this stitch. It's probably at this point buried. So what helps is to use your finger to push down all of these loops in the puff. Grab that single crochet and kind of pull up. And see, there's your chain three. There's the top of your chain right there. So we're going to insert our hook into that chain and slip stitch to join. And there you go. You survived. <laughs> Again, if this is too difficult for you, if you've tried it, you just can't get it, it's driving you nuts, um, an alternative is to, again, just double crochet around a row and then do a row of single crochet between the posts just like we did here. So you can do that. It's still going to look really cute. And then you can join me here and we'll continue together. So chain one and put one single crochet in each stitch around. Should be 20 single crochets. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and then join to the top of your first single crochet. You'll notice there's a little bit of a gap here and not so much there. The gap here is the same kind of gap you will have if you don't work around the vertical post. It's kind of impossible to avoid on the last puff because obviously you started without that vertical bar there and that's okay. But notice how much tighter these are because I worked around the vertical bar too. So it's not that big of a deal if you don't work around the vertical bar. It'll gap a little bit like that, but it'll still look nice. I've done it both ways. It really, it's whatever. Anyhow, so chain one. This is our last row for our basket. We're going to do reverse single crochet. So it's literally the action of single crocheting, but backwards. So if you're right-handed, you're going to the right. And if you're left-handed, you're going to the left. So we're just going to go into the previous stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Go into the previous stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And just do that going around. It feels weird, it looks weird, but you'll see that weirdness creates this twist, which just makes this so ornate and pretty. This stitch is also called the crab stitch. I call it reverse single crochet because that's mechanically what it is. Now, when it comes to your straps, you can just, if it's easier for you, you can finish this row, you can slip stitch to join, and then just chain 30, like two sets of 30, and then just tie the straps inside the basket along the uh, in, inner edge. But I work the straps all in one piece, and I'll show you how I do that. So when I finish this row, the pattern's going to tell you to turn your work so that the inside of the basket is facing you. And then I just sort of reach down underneath and kind of grab a section inside and slip stitch there. 
And now I'm immediately going to start my first strap. So chain 30. And after you've chained 30, turn your basket over so that the inside of the other side is facing you. Find the side opposite your strap and just kind of go underneath a post in there, like so, and slip stitch to join. Then what I do to avoid having to cut, tie, and start all over again is I simply slip stitch in the similar manner about five or six stitches over to work my way a quarter of the way around the basket. So I'm just going to insert my hook like this and slip stitch. I'm making sure that this loop is large enough and my stitches slip stitch is relaxed enough that it doesn't pucker my basket though. You don't want your basket to be cinched up in one spot because you had some tight slip stitches there. So I'm just doing this because when I'm working these, it's just so much faster to do this than it is to cut and tie and start over repeatedly. So you can see here I've slip stitched um, six times about five or six times it sort of depends on how evenly you made the first strap <laughs> but you want to be approximately halfway between your two straps and then chain 30 again And then after you've made 30, you just fold your basket in half to find the other side. So about right here, and just kind of work around that post there. Join with a slip stitch. And then what I like to do just for good measure is I slip stitch over one more chain one cut and tie doesn't have to be a long string just needs to be just enough you can kind of fish it down the inside a little bit so that it's not visible and that's it there's your little basket Isn't that pretty i am obsessed with horizontal puff stitches i've used it in several of my patterns i've made before <laughs> so at this point you just need to stuff your plant in now what's nice about this pattern is you could just tuck those ends in, stuff your plant in, and let it sit on a shelf or on a desk. Or you can then pull it out, put the plant back in, and hang it. I don't sew the plant in because that way you can change out the plant, or you can put something else in the basket, or you can tuck the straps in, you know, whatever you would like to do. Fish some of these arms through the straps. So I like to make it so that there is one, two, one, two on each side of the straps. Here we go. That's really all there is to it. Isn't that so cute though? So again, you can find this pattern in my Etsy shop for goodness keepsakes. When Google finally lets me put links in my description box, I'll put the link directly down there. I hope you really enjoyed this pattern and you found it very clear and easy to understand. If there's any part of it that's confusing or that you'd like to see again, let me know. Put it down in the comments section. I'll do my best to try to help you. So thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day.